that's not the New Holy Bible. It's just a version I like for this for this portion of Scripture. Uh, actually, I don't care. I tell people I don't care what Bible you use, as long as it's not the Mormon Bible or the Quran or something like that. You know, the one that says Holy Bible on it will be really good. Mm -hmm. Most of do so. First John uh, five seven. Let me just. I'm going to open up with just reading this first portion. So this is chapter five of First John. So faith. The mind's titled faith in the Son of God. We're going to talk about the Spirit today, so we're going to get down to the second part. So let me just read this because I like reading. Uh, the reason I want you to read today because when I get reading the scriptures, what happens? I want to read the scriptures before the verse that I'm going to read and after. So you get the content of it, so you know that pastor's not trying to pull something out of his hat, you know, and use a scripture that's uh, not right. So a lot of, um, today we're not going to do that because we don't have a lot of time for that. Uh, but uh, I do want you, when you go back home, to, to read about the Holy Spirit. I believe, I know Pentecost is in about 45 days from now that we can celebrate this, uh, the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, the Jewish people do too. We know as Christians that that's the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on all people. We know that the, even the children that were in the room that night begin to speak in tongues to how the power of God came on them. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So I want to teach, and Tina and I are going to teach over the next few weeks uh, about the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know it's my favorite subject because we kind of dismiss, because we believe that Jesus died for us, we believe the blood cleanses us, and that's what the Holy Spirit leads us to believe. So the Holy Spirit has a responsibility to draw uh, people to God, amen? And we need to understand the role of the Holy Spirit in our individual lives, uh, and how He operates, and, and hear His small, still voice, and how He, he guides you through the decisions in your life, and uh, understand who He is. And so we're going to go through this set of scripture verses because you are and this is uh, is uh, what this verse is about. I have some blanks near your your outline so hopefully you'll follow along. But let me read uh, uh, starting in 1 John chapter 5. Uh, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father and loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. Everybody read that with me. And His commands are not burdensome. Amen? Uh, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcame the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. And I think some versions say the, the, the Father and the Spirit, right? He did not come by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. The three are in agreement. So some versions take, say the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Does it say that in the New King James Version? And that's what we're going to look at. They all testify about the Son. They all testify about each other. And they're all in agreement. So when you study, some, some uh, people will, believe, will study about the Holy Spirit and say, well, they just believe about the Holy Spirit. They're all caught up in that. And others will say, well, I'm, I'm a Jesus-only person. I just believe in Jesus-only stuff. And if you don't know what that means, I'll share with that later. Or, you know, we just talk about the Father. But all three have the same message. Amen. And that message is that He loves us and He cares for us and He's going to reconcile us to the Father so we can live with Him forever. Amen. And through our daily walk, now listen, through our daily trials and tribulations, the Spirit of God is always there guiding and leading us. As a matter of fact, when you wake up in the morning and you have a thought about God, the Spirit of God put that there. Amen? When you're, walk, when you're in the park like we were yesterday and the Holy Spirit leads, says, go talk to that person, that's, the Spirit of God does that. Amen? Or you, uh, you're ready to yell at your wife, which most of you never do, I know that. But when you're ready to say something, the Holy Spirit will say, do you need to really say that? And you go, hmm, maybe not. 
right? It's the Spirit of God. He's concerned. God's concerned about every part of our life, and he knew we needed help. And he said, God sent his spirit for us. Amen? So let's look at, the, so we have the first part. God, um, I would be ungodly and godless without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when the day you received Jesus, can you remember that day when you said, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God? you remember that day? I remember that day. It's my birthday. It's one of my birthdays. Amen? I was born again. Right? You've heard that? Right? I remember that day just like it was, and it was the Spirit of God that gave me revelation, because I was reading the Bible at that time. I didn't understand a thing about what I was reading, really, but all of a sudden, this understanding came. And it was really, I thought God was cool, because I was reading Joshua and how he won all those battles and stuff. And I thought, this is, this is, I can, yeah, I can relate to this guy, being a military guy, and God used that. And I said, yes, Jesus, I remember that like it was today. And I hope you remember that. But without the Spirit of God, and remember this, when we're sharing Jesus with our friends, and we want them to come to the Lord, we want them to be saved, we want them to be overcomers, we want them to get out of the situation so they can have freedom and love and grace and peace, it's really the Holy Spirit that's going to draw them that last part, amen? You can't, it's, we have a job to do. Ours is to preach the message, and it's the Spirit of God that convicts and draws and brings them to that moment where they receive Jesus. So it took a lot of pressure off of me as a young evangelist when I was going around preaching. Because I wanted people to be saved today. You have to get saved today. You could die. You could be driving home from church and you could get in a car accident. You could wake up and you could be in heaven or hell. Do you ever hear preaching like that? I did it all the time. I probably turned off a lot of people from the gospel. You know? I did. It did. And now I do a little bit different. I want, I have an urgency in my spirit, but I know it's the spirit of God that brings them to that last moment of revelation of who the Son of God is. Amen? And I'm going to go long, so I'm not, let me, I'm going to rush, but I'm not going to go fast, okay? The Holy Spirit is your comforter. Now, John chapter 14, if you want to learn about the Holy Spirit, I would recommend that you would read this week the book of John, chapter 14 and 15 and 16, where Jesus is explaining to the disciples about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, and look at um, John 14, 26. Richard, would you read that? 14, 26. Correct. It says, uh, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So it says, verse 26, it says, the, the Holy Spirit is sent by the Father, right? And it was given in Jesus' name for us to do what? Comfort us, right? Because if not, we, we just live in, in pain and discouragement. The Holy Spirit is your helper, right? It's John was, Jesus explained to the disciples that the Holy Spirit was going to come and be your helper. And also the word parakletos is a word that means paraclete, which is, is in English. And it just means that he comes alongside us. He's attached to us. He's with us everywhere we go. Because remember our, you remember this, uh, it says in the Bible that, the, that we're, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Come on. Just smile on face. Think about that for a moment. The power of God, the comfort of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of God is in us already. So how can you be grumpy? I know I work on it. I work on that fleshly thing too. How can we get angry? How can we? How can we be upset? Right? How do we? How can we be that? If the Spirit of God, is, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it was a we'll read a little bit later that He was deposited in us. All right. So that was a, as for our inheritance. That means we have a future, something happening in the future, right? So he's a past in us, and in us, the Spirit, I think about the very, and we'll see the next thing, um, the very breath of God, maybe I'm going to, yes, uh, number six, the very breath of God, the very nature of God was breathed into Adam and Eve, and it became a living soul. So God breathed into you and me, that moment we said, yes, and the Holy Spirit was in us. But there's more than that. That's what's so cool about God. Guys, hey, I got, a, I got a gift for you, but I, I got, go ahead and dig a little bit, you know, you got, like Christmas, you get gifts, right? So you open up the box and say, oh, this is a nice box. I get the Holy Spirit. Oh, great. Oh, I got the Holy Spirit in here. 
<laughs> but then the Holy Spirit said, well, hey, just, there's another gift in the, bo the box, so keep digging. Because I got more for you. Amen? It's a special gift. There's more. There's more there to, for you. And, and you understand, well, I can walk in the very nature of God. Look at um, um, number six. It says, God, the, you are the breath of God. Now, Genesis 2 7 talks about uh, Adam and Eve. We built Adam, we ruled Adam. But look at John 20 22. Richard, would you read that one?
this happened. How can, how can, they, how can they do that? Only but with this power of God in them, then they say, no, I will serve Jesus with all my heart. To my last breath, I will not deny Christ. How can you do that? You can't do that unless you have the power and the presence of God in your life. And the love of God. I will not bow down to anything else but Jesus. Because I know I read that in the story, and he wins. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so will we one day. Hopefully with a crown of righteousness, we'll lay at the feet of Jesus. Because that's the only way we can do what we do. Amen? So pray for Israel. Pray for those Christians in Syria. Pray for those Christians in Africa. That every day they can get up and they can lose their life. The Christians in Iran and, and Russia now. All over the world. There's such persecution because they just believe in the name of Jesus. They believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Just like I do. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. And pray for our brothers and sisters that are giving their lives up for the kingdom of God. Amen? Wow. That's, that's pretty heavy stuff, right? But it's real. It's going on today. So we think about what we have to struggle with. What we struggle with today in America is we probably struggle with our fleshly desires and things, right? We don't struggle with, man, if I walk outside my door on Sunday morning, I'm heading to church, I can have my car blown up, right? We don't worry about that. We don't worry about if our kids are going off to school that we'll never see them again because somebody stole them and put our, our, our girls in a, a prostitution ring. We don't worry about that because they're Christians. Or like in Indonesia when they killed that young teenage girl riding her bike to church. Right? We don't, we don't, we don't have to worry about it. So what we struggle with is our we struggle with the most basic stuff. Americans are so selfish and so um, we I guess we never under, we can never understand the full power of God because we're just so worried about our own desires and our own mistakes and our own we just don't get past it. So I was talking to Pastor Andrew, Tina said like um, I saw Pastor Andrew yesterday, you know, and um, he was saying in, in, in Zambia, you know, they don't have doctors like we have doctors. They don't have uh, access to credit cards. food. They don't have credit cards, right? They don't, they don't even know what that is. So when they need something, they cry out to God. And they had a, he was telling me a story, they had an American pastor come to do a, a conference. And so they, they were going to open in prayer at the conference, and then he was going to preach. And um, difference between, I'm showing you the difference between us and them, or other countries. So the American pastor comes up and he prays for the conference, right? Blah, 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 blah. In Jesus' name, amen. And then he's going to preach. And then one of the pastors just went up to him and just pushed him aside. And then he said, let's pray. And they prayed. For three hours they prayed. Before they preached. Three hours they prayed. Because that's how he's teaching his pastors that if you want the power of God, because they're dealing with witch doctors, they're dealing with stuff that, you know, diseases and things that you need God to show up and take care of things. And I'm thinking, I want that. I want the hunger in my, in me so much that I'm going to seek God so he can take care of our situation. So if you want to fast and pray with me before the revival service comes up on, on first and second, which is Thursday and Friday, and pray with me that God takes care of the financial needs that we have. Amen? So fasting. This is fasting. He says, he says what do you do when you fast? He goes, what do, you, do you drink? Do you have soda, water, herbal tea? You know, we do Daniel fast here because, you know, that's all cool because we eat stuff. But he says, all we have is spit. That's all he, that's all he gets. <laughs> when they fast, four days, five days, nothing. Just crying out to God. Praying out to God. Hours. You know, they say they, they go in their prayer closet for hours at end, an hours or three hours at a time. They go and pray for three hours at a time, talking to God for a full three hours. And then they come out, they take a rest, a little break, and they go back in for three hours. And they come back out, and they three hours at a time. So they, and they just pray, always speaking, always asking, always praising, always honoring. So anyway, I don't know if we'll do that. We'll learn. Maybe we'll just, get, maybe we'll just do a few minutes at a time and just get to it, use it, right? And then those that can do it, do it. Try it one time, maybe a day or two. Just go two days or whatever. Take one weekend. Friday morning, get up, pray for three hours, take a break at nine, 
back in closet, break a break at mid noon, and just do that for one for 24 or 48 hour period. Just see, I'm telling you, your life will change. Amen? Your life will change. The Spirit of God will just come in you, and like verse 6, you just get, uh, number 6, you just get the breath of God in you. Um, did I, um, is there space there for 6 or whatever? Okay. Number 7, the Holy Spirit, you are a river of living water, James, uh, John 7, 38. My inner being would be empty or void, cracked, dry, a river bed without you. Without you. Would you read, um, Richard, read John 7, 38. Tina, would you get Isaiah 61, 3? And Glenda, could you get Psalms 45, 7? And go ahead, Richard. John 7, verse 38. Who, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within Within you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was explaining all that. I mean, you guys got that, right? The Spirit of God will flow through you, living water, li not just not just water that's all stagnant, yucky, and whatever, you know, like a stream. Living water, life-giving water that will pour out of you to your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, right? Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, Isaiah 61.3. and it says, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you are the oil of joy and the oil of gladness. shaken by a six situation. I'm always going to believe. Hallelujah. Don't compromise. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Psalm 45, 12. Your soul, which is of God, stands forever and ever. The center of your faith is above my How many have a daily devotion? Raise your hand if you have a daily devotion. I don't want to embarrass everybody else. You, okay. Seriously. If you don't have a daily devotion, you need to get out on uh, uh, Get on a book, get on the internet, get one, download one. There's so many uh, options out there. Uversion has a whole bunch of different ones you can do. Get a daily time where you're in the Word of God. I want to tell you what happened to me this uh, this week, Thursday. Thursday, I came in and I was going to prepare all this, and I and the Holy Spirit just, you know, I was not. It's like, okay, don't worry about this. He told me. I said, okay. And so I got in the Word. I'm reading uh, in the office, and I use uh, this is the first time I've ever done. It. I used the uh, the uh, Bible program on the computer, and I just have it read it to me, you know, as I read along, right? I never done that before because I thought, oh, that's I don't need to do that. But this year I did, and so since I've started doing that, it's just changed. At four hours, I was reading the Word of God. Four hours, I just I couldn't stop, you know. It's like, okay, I should go to my sermon. No, 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 just continue on. And it was just reading and reading and reading and just soaking in the presence of God because I didn't have to really read; I just followed along. I was just soaking in his presence, and God's presence showed up in my little office in there, and I just loved it. I didn't want to stop. It was just amazing. I'm just telling you, get in the Word, stay in the Word, because in the Word will change what? What will it change in part of your character? It will change your mind. It will change your thinking. Amen? It, it, you, it's like when you're in the Word, it's like your belief goes from maybe here to here. Because when you read things like, it, the, the, the throne of God will last forever. Nothing that you're dealing with will ever uh, um, upset that, amen? You will be able to conquer anything that you're going through in your life because of God is on the throne, amen? Worship Him. When I'm at the Word now, it's like it's almost an act of worship to want to be in His presence and be in the Word. I want to encourage you, just, if you don't have one, um, uh, we have a Bible reading chart. See uh, uh, Rajiv, we had made one for the year. Just get that printed out. I think we have some printed. Uh, and you can just start, just pick up from the day. You can do the day. Don't be, uh, I tell people, read the Bible slow because you don't have to rush through it. You know, it's like that, get to the end. Okay, this year I read all the way through the book of the Bible, uh, the whole Bible. Great. No, that's not a check mark thing. 
But it's when you're reading the Word of God, and the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Revelation, He's going to show you things in the Word of God. Not only about yourself, but about your situation, about life. It's just the way the Spirit of God operates. How many realize that's true? How many know we need to do that? How many know it's not easy? Okay, we know it's not easy. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Amen? And do it with joy. Don't do it as because Pastor told you to do it. All right? Don't do it because I said. Do it because you want the, the Spirit of uh, God, because you seek Him. There's some hidden manna in the Word of God that He will reveal to you because you're there studying and wanting to desire God. I love that when, when you're reading and all of a sudden, ha-ha, that goes with this verse and that goes with this verse. And you, you, you put things together that you never saw before because God by the Spirit is putting it together. Because from Genesis to Revelation, there's no controversy in this book. There's not. It doesn't contradict each other at all. It all comes together to tell one message that God loves you and God loves the world. Amen? And when you read that, it shows it. Okay, all right. I know we're not going to get through all this. So that's why I, I, I thought to myself, I'll just do 10 of these, and then I'll give you the rest, uh, I'll give you the rest next week. But next week, we've got a whole other message to, uh, to start with. So all these uh, scriptures, I want you to go home, and, and um, I want you to, uh, to study it. Study the, these, this, this word. This isn't powerful to understand what the Spirit of God is. Okay, uh, and, and Richard already read uh, 1426. Could you read 1526, Richard? Uh, John 1526.
in this church, you have to do this, this, and this, right? It's just some of the bad things to do. You don't want to do those things. We want, we know there's freedom and there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So your past is over because it's cleansed by the blood. Once you've confessed it, you're not that same person. Your past has no future. Yes, thank you, Glenda. That's right. Your past is over. And so we have, as believers, we have to believe that, too. So when we're talking to people, and maybe they're not cleaned up the way we want them to be, we've got to let them know that the Spirit of God is cleaning them up. I told them, I was talking to Andrew, my son, just the other day, I said, we're just supposed to be fishers of men. That's what he told his disciples, right? I'm going to make you fishers of men. Who cleans them up? Not the church, not the religion, not the assemblies of God, not, none of that. But God, by His Spirit, begins to change people. So like when somebody comes up to you and says, you know, Pastor, or they come to me sometimes and they say, no, Pastor, I've been dealing with this, this, and this. And I said, oh, praise God, because the Holy Spirit's going to reveal that to you, that, that you should be doing that, right? And then I don't condemn them, we just pray. And I'm excited in my spirit because people are maturing in their relationship with God. Right? How many struggle with stuff? Come on. We struggle with stuff. And as believers, we're just going to encourage you not to struggle with that anymore. Because we want you to minister to other people what God delivered you from. If you struggle with a, an addiction and you overcame that addiction by Jesus... What happens? Then God will help you. Maybe it's some person that comes along later on. I know this always happens. With that same addiction, and you can help them through it. Right? Not offer them a thousand scripture verses to read, or, you know what I'm saying? Don't come to church every Sunday giving the offering. That's all good. We need all that stuff. But the most important thing is the Spirit of God will change that person. We just got to kind of catch them. Like, ooh, stop. If you're going the wrong way, let's come over this way. Let me show you gift of eternal life that's for you and me. Amen? Praise the Lord. Alright, uh, where are we at? The, the, number 12. Uh, the Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of holiness. Romans 1-4. Go ahead, Dad. Um, the designated Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection of the dead will show the chains of our heart. So it says that he's a, the spirit of holiness. What? So when you say of holiness, what is? Give me a definition of holiness. Somebody. Set apart. Set apart. You, you scholars, I love you. Uh, yeah. We're whole, We're sanctified. We're set apart. We're holy. God's made us holy. So well, I'm not holy. I mean, God. If you knew all the things that I'm dealing with, you wouldn't think I'm holy. But see, God looks at us through a different lens. He looks at us through the blood of Jesus. Amen. He doesn't see the sins and imperfections. He sees a holy bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen? Hallelujah. All you have to simply do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then with, uh, maybe there's a little bit more because as we progress in our relationship with God, He reveals things in our lives. Let's be real. He, reveals, he begins to reveal things in our lives that He wants to change. And then we're, they, we either can obey or disobey the Spirit of God. Right? Come on. You know what I'm talking about. And the Holy Spirit said, oh. And you're going, yes, I'm sorry again. And why? Because he wants us to grow in our relationship with our relationship with God. He wants us to seek after. So, because you, when you sin or you are dealing with an issue in your life, it is hard to go to the Father and ask, right? You don't want to be around the Father. You want to, you kind of like, you know, when a child sins, you know, when a child does something wrong, they take something or do something they're not supposed to do. You know, the last thing they want to do is be around mom and dad. Right? They will hide in their room. Why are they hiding their room? Why are they doing that? Hmm, what's going on? And then you know, as soon as you talk to them, they'll be able to tell you, right? Because you don't want to be around the Father. So when we're dealing with issues in our own personal life, we don't want to be around the Father. We don't want to be around the Holy Spirit. We want to be around people that are also like us. You know, they're struggling. So we, we go hang out over here where we're not supposed to be. Right? But the Holy Spirit is just kind of like, come on, it's okay. The Father loves you. Remember, he loved you before you were created in your mother's womb. That's how much he loves you. He knew you. Amen? He knows. He has a hope and a future. He, he knows. Come on, let's go. Just talk to daddy. Right? And it's okay. The Holy Spirit does this. Come on. Is he done? Come on. Is this for me or do you? Or am I just, is this crazy? He does. He just kind of, come on. Come on. Because what happens when I get in a situation where I'm not where I'm supposed to be, then I don't want to spend time in my office in the Word of God and pray. Right? I just want to go hang out somewhere else. I don't want to be in there. Because I know when I go in there, I'm with, I'm with Father God. That's my prayer closet. That's where I go. Amen? 
And then he's, he's there waiting on me. And you know, the first thing I have to do is like, oh, dad, I'm sorry. Because I know. It's like the prodigal son, right? Dad, did, he didn't say, what did you do with all the money? What do you smell like a pig? He didn't do none of that kind of stuff. He put his arms around him, put on a robe on him, put a ring and authority back in his hand, put a new shoe on him, and said, welcome home, son. My son was lost, but now he's found. Amen? He loved him. That's what we need to us. So don't be afraid to ever go into, when you make a mistake, confess to your wife you did something wrong, and then to the father, and then... You know, our, the people we hurt is in our relationship always, right? So just don't be afraid to, uh, to do that. Okay, 2 Timothy 1.7. Are you guys enjoying this? Yeah. Are you getting anything out of this? Okay, good. I, I love talking about the Holy Spirit and how he, he guides us. He loves us. He's, he's there to empower you. When you go to lay hands on the sick, it's not you doing it. It's the power of God through the Spirit that does it through you. Well, I feel like I should pray for that person. Um, you know, you wrestle with the flesh. You know, should I? Should I? I want to embarrass in Walmart, you know. I, but I feel that the Spirit of God is telling me to go talk to that person. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do it. Honey, I'm, I tell Tina, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to talk to you. So I go over there. As soon as I talk, as soon as I open my mouth, the presence of God is there. But it took me to, to struggle. The Spirit of God, come on. You, you can do this. You just, I, want my, I want the message of hope and love to talk to this person. And I need you to open your mouth. Okay, okay, and I'm shaking, I'm embarrassed, but I get there once I do it. Once I say, hey, my name is Bob, and I, want, I think God wants me to tell you something. And they're like, what is it? And you're like, wow, that was easy. And that's what I, I always find it. Or, or uh, uh, I believe God wants me to pray for you. Is there something that I can pray for for you? Simple, very easy stuff. And you go, yes, I, I just had surgery or whatever, and you just do it. It's so much fun. Matter of fact, the Power and Love Conference that's coming up in this summer, you, everyone needs to be at that conference. There are morning services and evening service. And it's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to teach you how to do just what I said. How to, how to be used by the Holy Spirit in your everyday life. And when you see somebody hurting in a wheelchair, God doesn't want people in a wheelchair. They don't, I don't know if they'll rise up and walk, but what if they did? The one who healed you wasn't me, it was Jesus, and you share with them the gospel. The one who touched you in your leg, it wasn't me, it was Jesus who did that, who died on the cross for you, who suffered and died so you could be healed. I just want you to know that message, and, and he loves you. Amen? The church would grow outside these four walls if we just do that, right? It's not about bringing them here, it'd be great someday to have the place full, but if you guys would just do that, Leo, just do that to, tomorrow when you go to class, you know? Just ask the Holy Spirit, is there somebody here I should pray for? And if we would say, well, they're not even, they don't even believe there's a God. Well, guess what? They might not be believe in God, but when you touch them and pray for them and God heals them, they'll believe there's a God. And then you show what God healed them, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But it just takes faith. It just takes us to um, get rid of our fleshly thoughts and just listen to the Holy Spirit. Right? And you know what? This will happen to you like it happens to me sometimes. The Holy Spirit said, you need to go over there and talk to that person. I'm like, I'm going to hurry. i got stuff to do, right? And then when I go past, I go, man, that's messed up. Because you feel guilty then. Come on. Yeah. Holy Spirit only does that to you. Yeah. And then I drive around the block, go back to that person, take time out of my schedule that I thought was busy. I mean, think about God. Excuse me. God of this world, this universe, will stop me to go talk to this person. And what is my schedule compared to that? Come on, what is my, why am, I, why am I on a rush for? I'm on this world to be, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I get fear, fearful sometimes, that's so why I need the Spirit of God to help me push me along and do that. And that's what he does for us, amen? Man, okay, spirit of love, 2 Timothy 1, 7. I am bound, uh, I would be bound by the spirit of fear without you. I just talk about fear, right? Go ahead. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but of power and of love, well it's in the word, right? It's right there. He, he did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear is a, the, the, another verse. Uh, he didn't give us a spirit of fear or be intimidated by the world. He gave us a spirit of power and a sound mind. How many minds get all messed up about things in the world? A sound mind. Steadfast on the Lord so we can do his work. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And then the next one is uh, the power of love in verse 13. Number 13. Number 14 is, power, is the spirit of power. And number 15 is the spirit of the sound mind. So all three of those are out of uh, that verse. If I, I don't know if I left the blanks there or not. But number 16. The Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Isaiah 11, 2. Look, turn to this one. Everybody turn to Isaiah 11, 2. Uh, when, I started, when I read this, I um, uh, got this in my spirit a, few, a couple years ago. Um, every day I read this, this, this chapter 11. <clears throat> this is talking about, this is what Jesus quoted, right? It says, I shoot, a, a shoot who comes up from the stump of Jesse, from the roots, roots a branch, will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of power, the spirit of knowledge, and the, and the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. That's what we need. That's what the church needs. We need a knowledge. Uh, we just fear of the knowledge that we don't have fear of God. Maybe the reason we don't do what we're supposed to do is because we don't fear God. Because it's like another par compartment of our life. Like, okay, well, okay, Sunday, so we have God. Or maybe Bible study on Wednesday or whatever. Uh, you know, we just, we use God then. Or when we need God. How many do that? When, when desperation, like this bank issue, I'm like, cry out to God. Why did I cry out to God all the rest of the years? Maybe this would have been taken care of ahead of time. I don't know. But it's like when we get in a situation, we just, like, I guess we all do that. We get desperately cry out to God. But we don't have a, if we had the fear of God daily, when crisis comes, we would, hey, God's going to take care of that. He's on the throne. Our righteous and holy God. Now, I don't think it's a fear like, oh my God, I'm going to be punished fear. I have more like a reverence. God is. And awe of God. Because <coughs> that's who He is. And the Spirit, I say, God, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, help me to have the reverent fear of God. A righteous fear. He gave us breath, and He can take that breath away. That's pretty powerful. Alright, can we get anything out of this? Alright. Alright, praise the Lord. 18. Uh, the Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of knowledge and the fear. Okay, we just said that. I'm sorry. Number 19. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Uh, uh, spirit and revelation. Uh, Ephesians 1.17. You can look that up later. Uh, number 20. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of adoption. We're adopted into the family of God, right? Where we can find, where we can call God Abba Father, right? Uh, and we'll, I won't teach you on that right now, but we, we, we're, we're, we're children of God. We're adopted in the family. No matter what, we're not Jewish. Most of us here are not Jewish, so we're not. We're, but we're adopted into the family of God. We're grafted, one part says in, in John, that we're grafted into the vine. We're grafted into the road. We're grafted into the, into the Jewish nation, if you will. And so we're part of his family. We're part of his chosen. So when they say, who is the chosen people of God? We'll say the Jewish people. Everybody always says that. I'm his chosen. I'm his call. I'm his righteous. Amen. Those are some of your names. We'll talk about that in a few weeks too. Matter of fact, our next series that we're going to do is, is, is your names. What does God call you? There's over a thousand names in the Bible that God calls you. Yeah. Well, we're going to learn them because you're special. And you're righteous. And you're holy. And you're his treasure. And you're the apple of his eye. Amen. So we're going to talk about that in our next, in our next series uh, through the summer. So we can understand who we are so we can have the power of God in us because sometimes we're, we're intimidated by the world that hey you don't have to be just I was thinking about those boys so I think just like them they, they died for the gospel because they knew and understand who they were they weren't going to give up on God praise the Lord okay um, what, where we, which one we leave on 21 yeah 21 Holy Spirit, you are the power, power of promise. Spirit. Our spirit of promise. I would not inherit God's many promises without the Holy Spirit uh, revealing them to us. All right. I'm going to end here, and I want you guys to finish. I'm going to just go through. What blanks do I have left? 28. 28. 
is guaranteed. Oh, this is a good one. Ephesians, you got to read this later. But Ephesians 1, 13, guarantees our inheritance. Yeah, you want to go ahead and read that one. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also have believed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his Read that again. You are the guarantee. Yeah. You're guaranteed an inheritance if you just continue to believe. And I know because of our world situation that they would deal with, it's hard for us by ourselves to continue to believe. That's why the Holy Spirit says, hey, even though they think you're bad here, you know what? You're my, still my daughter. You're still my son. I'm not going to believe that lie. I'm going to believe what the Holy Spirit tells me. Because I've got an inheritance. I'm guaranteed an inheritance if I would... And I love the verse where, I, I love where it says, tell me, I can't remember, first, it's first minute, we're going to run a race as to win the prize. You know what I'm saying? Where's that at? Let me look at it real quick. We're running, we're in a race. We're not in a sprint. We're in a race to endure to the very end, whatever that end may be. We're, gonna, we, we're in this thing, so God is guaranteeing us that we're going to make it to the finish line. By his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Huh? So well, I don't believe in just, I don't believe in once saved, always saved. Do you ever hear that terminology before? Huh? I don't believe that. Because I believe this. Even though the Spirit of God is deposited in you, you can tell the Spirit of God to take a hike. Because God's never going to mess with your will. I want to serve God. I want to know him. I want to seek him. And he said, if he did, then the Spirit of God will help us understand who God is and it will even show us the deep secrets of God. Amen? Yes. Yes.
precious name. Amen. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Take this and, uh, and use it and study it and uh, allow it to change your life. Amen? Amen. All right. Love you guys. Greet one another.